untouchable Hindu man murdered for marrying upper caste Muslim woman. In an episode that has caught national attention in India, on May 4th, a Dalit Hindu man, more commonly known outside of India as part of the untouchable caste, um, 26-year-old Billy Puram Nag Naga Raju was beaten to death by a group uh, by his in-laws in Hyderabad, India. Uh, Naga Raju was attacked because he married a Muslim woman against her family's wishes. The victim's wife, Sayed Ashrin Sultana, said she and her husband had been in a relationship since the 10th grade. Quote, he even told my mother that he would convert to Islam, but they never accepted the proposal, Sultana said. Sultana's family belonged to the Syed class, a Muslim, a Muslim upper caste who claims to be a direct descendant of the Prophet Muhammad. After getting married on January 31st of this year through a Hindu ceremony, the couple moved several hours away from their hometown due to the threats from the bride's family. Sultana claims that at least five individuals attacked them. The police were able to arrest Sultana's two brothers. The national spokesperson for the ruling right-wing BJP party, uh, Shahzad Punawala, stated that if the attack were the other way around, the United Nations would accuse India of quote-unquote Islamophobia. But, quote, since a Hindu has been killed uh, in, and in Hyderabad, the crime is secular, he added. On the other hand, many point to the inter-caste aspect of their relationship as opposed to the inter-religious dynamic as the primary motivation for this killing. Wait, who is who is saying this is a secular crime? I don't understand. Is anybody saying this? Like nobody's excusing this. What the hell is that? What, what okay, the hell is so in in India, like when people um try to point to when communal or religious aspects of a, a crime are just conveniently not mentioned they all say right. oh this is secular like all of a sudden this issue is secular all of a sudden you don't mention the groups that they come is from. anybody all saying that about this crime So what's actually mm. interesting is so this this case right. is interesting just, for a lot I just, of reasons. I, just, like, I don't really I don't really want to get too much in. I just say yes or no. Like, have we seen anybody saying that? Because I just think like they can't just point to this crime and uh, uh, condemn it. They just have to find a way to be victims all the time. Like that's what it seems like they're doing. Like even in this crime, they're just trying to find victimhood. You know what I mean? Like that's what I think. Like, yes, they're doing. but I yeah. have noticed a lot of Indian media not really talking about the fact that her family is Muslim very much. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So this is, um, you know, I think like rather than people thinking like which group I am in, and therefore let me spin it that way so it benefits my group. Can we just like look at what happened and figure out what happened and what's the what's the reason that caused this? Like I think like that's a lot of motivations from all sides, like the people who are on the I don't know Hindu side or Muslim side or upper caste side or lower caste side or secular. If, if, a lot of people just look at it and like, wait, let me look at the story. This because there's so many different factors at played here, uh, being played here, and people are like, which one do I want to highlight? to push my agenda and we're just talking about a victim here and we want to see what the actual cause is and what how we can reduce stuff like this and what it like maybe that should be the main agenda do you know what i mean like rather than spinning it like if you if you are a um hindu and you're like hey how could i make it seem like you know, how, what can I get out of this? Or if you're a Muslim and you say, like, what can I get out of this? Or if you're a, sec a secularist and you're like, hey, what can I get out of this? Maybe that shouldn't be the way you look at news. Maybe you should look like, this is a victim. What was the cause? No, do you, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, don't politicize it. All right, so what was the cause? Like, it seems like it's hard to tell because it's both... Um, the, is, it, is it the Hindu... Muslim thing that offended them, or is it the upper caste, lower caste that offended them? Which one was it? Do you think that offended them? 
Well, and on top of that, it's just generally marrying against the parents' wishes. So there's like three aspects of it. Um, yeah. So it's really tough to tell. Um, the it's really so I've been kind of doing some amateur media analysis on this, and the right wing just says, "Oh, this is Hindu Muslim," you know, this is a Hindu Muslim crime. Left wing media says, "No, this is intercaste." So, and they very exclusively mm. focus on one or the other. So, so, so it's before difficult. before you continue, before you continue, this is why. Okay, so because the the m woman's family is Muslim, um, it it would help the Hindu narrative to say that this is Mus Hindu Muslim. Because if that's the reason, then this was Muslim on Hindu violence. Okay, exactly. so that's why. Okay. But if you are like leftist and you want to point to the Hinduism being a problem here, then if you focus on upper caste, lower caste, even though the upper caste family was a Muslim, the whole caste system was inherited by Hindu ideology to the point where even Muslims in India have adopted that, right? Mm -hmm. So even this was a Muslim family attacking a Hindu man and killing him. Um, you could still say this is Hinduism. This is this crime is because of Hinduism because it was caste. Uh, uh, be, so that's why you say. But this is so sad to see so predict so predictable about what which side pushes what narrative. Like it's obviously if left leaning people are only focusing on the caste part, and the right leaning Hindu ones are only focusing on the religion. It, does it not suggest that a lot of these people don't really care about what's actually happening, mm -hmm. whether leftists or the Hindus? Like because you're being so predictable about what you're pointing at, pointing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, it's extremely predictable. I think. Um, I, it's sorry. Is like really sad they are like a young couple they've known each other since they were like children they've been together for a really long time they dated each other in secret for years and years and years until finally they were really pushing to get married and like he was willing to convert to islam like to to marry their daughter they refused um she survived an honor killing attempt her brother tried to kill her for her relationship with she calls him raju um, and she survived that violence and then they got married and they escaped <clears throat> and they went to a city, like a city or town, 10 hours away. And they were there for a while. And then they were visiting some of Raju's relatives because his family was more accepting. And then when they were traveling in between one of his relatives homes and then the rental where they were staying, all of a sudden her brothers come up on a motorcycle and possibly other men as well and start just beating him to death. And she has to witness the whole thing. She witnesses oh, no. the whole affair. She's begging people to stop and intervene, like touching their feet, begging them to stop, do something. No one helps her. No one helps him. She has to see him die in front of her eyes. And then now she's like separated away from her family. The There's like some government effort to get some other members of Raju's family, some work because he was a car salesman and he was like a big provider of the family. And now they don't have that anymore. Um, and I was reading an, uh, an interview with her and um, she basically said, like, I didn't see him as a Hindu. Like I didn't see his caste. Like I didn't care about that. Like to him, all I knew was that Allah created him for me. Like that's the way that they loved each other. And it didn't, so they didn't like these barriers and social groups and obstacles didn't matter to them. Like he tried to convert to Islam. They're like, no, that's not good enough. Probably because he's still, you know, lower caste, he's Dalit. And then, so she ended up for their marriage, ended up doing a Hindu ceremony. So she ended up leaving Islam technically for him. They both didn't. Oh, they both loved each other, and like we don't know what we have to do. 
does he have to convert to Islam? Do I have to leave Hinduism? No, like what what game do we have to play so that we can just be with each other? Because we they loved each other and none of this mattered to them. They're just like, please, society, tell us what we have to do to be able to get out of this goddamn stupid game that you are making us play because we just love each other. That's so sad. Like the fact and, that he, um, he was ready to just accept any religion for her and she was ready to leave any religion for him um, just shows like they were like all these social taboos and barriers. It didn't mean anything. Imagine, by the way, imagine loving somebody so much that you're willing to go through all this hell to just to be with them. And then instead of society, like you dance, doing all the dances that you have to do to just like, please let us, please just let us be with each other. And the way society responds is make you watch, watch the person that you love, the love of your life. You have to watch that man be beaten to death. It's just like, like, I don't know if you, how many people here have experienced a death in your family, right? It's tragic, right? But imagine that times a thousand because you have watched the last moments of their life being tortured to death right in front of your eyes and nobody, and you begging other people to help you and nobody doing anything about it. Like that is, that is, that is hell. Oh, literally. Yeah. And then now it's gotten into a situation where it's just been completely politicized. Like, this whole train has like run away from them right it's not even about them anymore so the local bjp in the area really seized on this issue they started rallying around them really hardcore there was a small embed car right um that that's like a for those who don't know it's like a kind of a dalit liberation organization um uh do you think, who do you tried think to do something for the family but the embed car right um, society was like too small to really get the attention that the BJP was really like pumping into this. Um, yeah. And Dia saying yes. And this was even done by your own family. Yeah. You're watching the love of your life being beaten to death by, by your family. That's actually even, yeah. Who previously tried to do the same thing to you. Yeah. Nanda think he could have become a Muslim to marry her. Maybe that could have saved him. No, he tried, but the lower caste, the fact that he was a Dalit, that's you know uh, that was not good enough for them and um yeah go on so when you when you're asking like oh was this inter was this interreligious was this intercast i don't think there's a simple answer to that yeah it's complicated i think um part of what it is is that this is so what's evolved in indian society is that there are many people who are upper caste but they are low class so technically mm. they have an upper caste but because of um a lot of dynamics that have evolved over decades and centuries people who were in the upper caste don't have skills that are um as lucrative whereas actually like labor focused dalit communities have actually succeeded more so mm -hmm. the fact that they were from an upper caste family but they were a poor family of fruit vendors um scholars i was reading this piece written by an academic about this situation and saying like this is a very contentious like social intersection where mm -hmm. you feel a sense of angst over how you are supposed to be upper caste but you experience the struggle of being low class right. and like right. not being treated as well because of your low class status and right. And this kind of do you think you're upper so you're upper, like resentment and even violence like because right this, right right like right. Raju was like a um a well earning car salesman in comparison oh so he was lower caste but he was upper class and from upper caste people they it causes resentment and jealousy because they're like we're upper caste why are why is he getting respect for being upper class. We inherently, we are inherently better. We should, this is, this is the respect that we deserve, not this guy. I don't know if he was necessarily upper class, but he seemed to have had more economic mobility and growth right. potential than they did. Oh, guys, like, oh my God. So imagine how powerful ca the caste system could be that even if you have financially made it, people hate you because you're still lower caste. That's on. That's crazy. 
this by the way this makes the whole thing so complicated right like this is not like so many factors here your class uh your caste your religion god damn it <laughs> <laughs> and and so, also the just general taboo in Indian society of like going after a love marriage when your family opposes it. Like even if all the other groups were the same, if your if your family and your like collective says no, like you have to take way more um, potential losses to go ahead and pursue like that love relationship. Right. Oh, and blank name is um, calling it entitlement. Yeah, yeah. If you're upper. If you're up her cast and you think like you inherently deserve the respect that would make you yeah that's the best thing to call it isn't it oh mm -hmm. yeah and also blank name is called this is called intersectionality yes by the way guys this is called intersectionality so for a lot of people who think intersectionality is just like a crazy thing that only some far lefty people use no it actually has utility like trying intersectionality is just a study of seeing how all of these different dynamics affect each other it becomes very complicated so it's not just a buzzword that some i don't know uh thumb uh, you know thumb uh, tumblr yeah tumblr or like uh twitter people people use like far lefty uh, colored haired people use like it's not that it's actually so, it's some academic it's it's a it's a very academic um complicated academic uh, study, right? I mean, Susanna, you know this. But some people like simplify it and then use it in ways that it's not supposed to be used on Tumblr and Twitter and other places. And people think like, oh, the whole thing is nonsense. But it is it is actually um, complicated. What do you think? Oh, no, I completely agree. Yeah. <laughs> like they're saying, Twitter, you ruined the word. <laughs> True. Well, and I'm gonna say you are true, Armin. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, is there anything? Oh, there's a video here. Do we want to? We don't want to show. No, it, we? we can't show that on YouTube at all. Okay, guys, there's a. Okay, is this the video of the beating? The, yeah. That was it. Was recorded. Oh my god. Oh, there's tons of recordings of this. Oh my God. Okay, guys, there's a, a, at the bottom of the video, there's links to all these articles. Um, the second article is this one that I'm showing you here on the screen. We can't show this on YouTube because we will probably get uh, removed from YouTube if we do that. But if you want to see it, that's where the link is. Yeah, I did find it really interesting with this story to think about how there, I did see a lot of left wing media, like not really digging into the Muslim on Hindu aspect of this crime, um, which I think is a really missed opportunity because that just breeds resentment. And in their effort to um, be delicate about an issue, they're actually fueling the legitimacy of the claims by the opposition that actually do. Um, like dehumanize minorities. So in, I think in their efforts to like protect minorities in the way that they talk about when these types of incidents happen, when it's minority on majority crime, um, they're actually harming minorities because they're not like being honest and holding them accountable in the same way that they would if it was majority on minority. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just going to like cause resentment and then people in the majority majority are going to say look they, they're appeasing them it's just yeah it's really mm -hmm. tough atheist republic needs your help we have been the target of many legal attacks by hindu nationalists ever since our founder armin Abhabi blasphemed against hindu deities we have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in india we have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues including judicial harassment and censorship Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.